Hello and welcome to another Vista Tips and Tricks video. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of our busking with the Vista series. Um, now that we have created our presets to busk with, and we've also created some effects lists and some triggers for those effects lists and some releases for those effects lists, um, we're ready to look at some of the extra stuff that you can use kind of over the top of this. So once you have everything up and running, we can now look at some of the extra things that we can do um, to kind of manually busk over the top of these effects. And this is kind of where you'll get um, a lot of your dynamics for your tracks that you're listening to. So every time there is a chorus um, or call and response with the audience, we can use things like blinders, uh, solos, we can use strobes, um, we can use things like flyouts, and this can all be triggered manually uh, whilst everything else is running. So we're going to be looking at how to implement some of these things in the next few videos. So as always, when we're starting kind of with a new section of programming, I like to create a quick picker to put it all in. So um, for these kinds of manual effects, I'm going to go over and create a, uh, a new quick picker page in my queue lists, uh, and I'm going to call it manual effects. And this is kind of a blanket term for everything that we're going to be putting in here. So any flyouts, any uh, blinders and bumps, any strobes, all of this is going to go in here um, just to keep track of where it all is and make it easy to organize our console. So the first thing we'll look at is a flyout. I had a request to kind of ask how do we get um, flyouts, put them on flash keys and faders, etc. So first thing to do is right click in your new quick picker page. Go to create new queue list and we'll call this one flyout. We'll call it spots flyout. There we go. Then simply right click and hit edit to open this up for programming. Now, this can be done a lot of different ways. Um, but when I'm doing kind of like a basic box standard flyout, I like to have intensity and position in this. But of course, you can have it fly out and go to red. You can have it fly out and go to a gobo. You can have it fly out and zoom in. Um, there is no kind of right and wrong. But for me, I'm going to put intensity at full for my spots. I'm then going to build either a new preset to create my fly out look or make my fly out look from existing presets. So for this, I'm going to use my up and fan out presets to create this kind of fly up and fan out look. Label the queue, and once that's done, what we can do is we can hit close, save and release. Now if we go over to our console, using our new quick picker page, we can quickly go to manual effects and find it. Because if we go to all, you can see that we have to go through all of this. And sometimes this can be very kind of, well, if you've got lots and lots of queue lists, it can be kind of hard to go through every single list to find everything. So this is exactly why I use all of these custom quick picker pages. It just makes navigating around all of your content very easy. So we're going to go to manual effects, drag in our spot flyout. Now at the moment, we've got it on a play button. Um, but what we're going to want to do is put this on a flash button. But to get this to work how we want it, we're going to have to look at some queue list properties. So from your console, you can right click on the queue Go to queue list properties, options. I like to have anything like this, bumps, flyout, strobes, as high priority because I want this to play over the top of everything else that's going on. Um, I will also have it as an all features fader type. Um, I'll show you um, in a little bit. When we drag this onto a fader, we can actually use the fader to control the speed of our flyout. So this can be something else you might want to do. Um, we're going to change this from autoplay to autoplay and release. Once this has finished playing or finished flashing, I just want the queue list to release itself and go away. Um, because we want things to be manual when we get on our fader, we're going to use submaster. So this means that it will be following our manual time. If it was normal, it would be following our queue time. But we're going to keep it as submaster. I'm going to exclude it from store and I'm going to have my release timing as zero seconds. Again, all of this is customizable. Things like release timing, you might want to have a slower release timing, um, depending on how you're uh, firing this queue. So with all that, we're going to hit OK. Now, if I 
grab a flash key, throw it on the button. Now when I tap my flash key, you'll see that I get my flyout, and when I release, it then goes away again. So this means at any point during the flyout, I can stop it, or I can stop and hold it and let go. So it just adds, again, that kind of manual dynamic to whatever you're busking. Another thing that I like to do sometimes, um, and I do this for strobes more often than anything else, I actually like to have a toggle key because um, this means that I can just hit this, I'll know that it will play, then I can go and do something else, change some colours, change an effect, and then when I want this to stop flying out, I just tap it again. So this can be nice, instead of a flash key, you could always try out something like a play toggle. And if I drag it onto this blank fader here, now we've got it on a fader, you'll see that as soon as I move the fader, the cue will activate, but the timing of the cue will be kind of whatever I want it to be on this fader. So that's why we changed our all features fader type from intensity to all features on our Qless properties. So with that being said, we can have a look at the next part of this, which is something that's been requested a couple of times, is that how do I get my flyout effect to override my position effects? So depending on how you have your effects set up, you will have to do a few different things. But if you have them set up the way we've been doing them in these tutorials, then your position effects will be um, all no base point effects which means that we can then use them in tandem with our presets and move them about our rig. So if we go to our uh, effects lists and I turn my spots on and I make a symmetrical effect, for instance, I can then go over to my busking presets and put them into a position. So this is what I mean by that. We have our effects lists or our position effects using no base point. So what it means, it, it will adopt and rotate around any base point that's given to it from somewhere else. So in this case, live. So we have our position presets in live, meaning that I can have this effect running, but I can move it around wherever I want. I can have it pointing straight down. I can have it pointing up. I can have it pointing straight at the audience. Um, and obviously this is extremely useful um, depending on where you want the action to be focused on stage. But because of this, if we now go to our flyout and I hit go, you'll see that it moves the effect a little bit, but it hasn't stopped my effect and I'm not actually seeing my flyout look anymore. And that's because all we've done with this cue is provide a new base point for our position effect. So the way we get around this is I'm quickly going to clear everything and we're going to edit our flyout cue. So to do this, we'll play our flyout cue. And because we want this to override a position effect, we want it to tell that position effect to stop. We want to do this now. And then when this goes away, we want that position effect to start again. Um, the answer is actually quite simple. What we do is we create another position effect that has its speed and size at zero. Um, that isn't a no base point effect. So basically, all you're actually seeing in this queue is the base point of an effect that's overriding another effect. Uh, meaning that because this queue is at high priority, when we hit go, the no base point effect will be overridden with this new static effect is basically what it is. And then when we turn this cue off, it will go back to our original effect. So this is how we can get everything kind of working in tandem and over the top of each other um, without getting mixed up. And it's just a series of turning things on and turning them off when we don't need them anymore. So to do this, it really is as simple as creating kind of any old position effects with all of your fixtures um, in the cue selected. And then just take the um, size to zero and the speed to zero. And as long as it is a bound effect, um, 
that this is kind of it. This is perfect, ready to go. You could even save this as a template, um, as a kind of um, effect. So I'd call it position effects at zero. And then you can use this kind of again and again and again. Again, remember, if you want your effect uh, name to update, once you've created a template, go to it and then click on it and then you'll see it updates in the effect engine. Again, um, if you go and have a look at my updating show file videos, uh, I will cover this and how it's useful for going from venue to venue. So with our new uh, effect that's doing nothing basically, now in this queue, if I now save and release, I will clear live and we will set up that look again. So I'm going to grab my spots. I'm going to put them downstage. I'm going to go to my effects lists, put my spots on and let's do a pan wave this time. So I've got my pan wave going. Now, if you remember before, when I did my fly out, um, it just moved the pan wave or it just moved whatever effect was playing. But now it will overwrite that list um, stop that effect happening, go to our flyout look, and if I then toggle this off again, back to our original effect look again. So this is a couple of things you can do with flyouts. I hope you found this useful. Please let me know if there's any more questions to do with this topic. I'll be bringing out a few of these kind of shorter videos just looking at different kinds of manual effects. So the next one we'll look at is perhaps strobes, and then I'll look at color bumps after that. But if there's any other kind of quick effects or quick manual things that you want to do uh, over the top of other things, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can show you how to do those too. See you in the next video.